about once or twice a year, Affinity drops a big free update out of the blue, and that's pretty much what happened this week, so we're gonna be checking it out. Hello, my name is Brad and I review tech for creative professionals. We're talking about designers, illustrators, that one guy who keeps asking me for tech support on his stolen copy of Adobe Illustrator. I just can't even. Today is probably the coldest day of the year here. I woke up and our furnace was broken and I thought today is gonna be a terrible day. And then Affinity dropped this big update and I thought it's all turning around now. Actually, by the time you watch this, it's gonna be like a day or two later, but still I'm taking the winds where I can get them. Also, I'm, I'm dressed in layers. All right, I'm taking a look at the list and I'd say like most of the things that I'm seeing in here are small fixes. There's nothing huge. There's nothing that's like blowing me away here, but all of these things are nice additions and nice things to have. Also worth pointing out is it seems like a lot of the updates here are for Affinity Publisher, which is the most recent app they released about eight months ago, which makes a ton of sense. New customers roll in, they start using the product, they get a lot of feedback. So that's the product that they're gonna be focusing on. And I do have to admit out of the three products out there, Affinity Designer, Affinity Photo, and Affinity Publisher. Affinity Publisher is the one that I personally use the least. So in some places, I'm just gonna roll through the list of features. In other places, I'm gonna dwell on the features a little bit if I think they're a little more pertinent to the work that I do and the work that you might be doing. Also, as a side note, since there isn't a huge update to Affinity Designer, I'm not gonna be doing like a huge update to my Affinity courses, neither the iPad or the desktop version. And also, if you want those courses, there's discount links down below. Plug, plug, plug. Plug. Anyway, sorry about that. On to the video. Let's start with Affinity Photo. One thing that I do want to point out before we get rolling too deep into this is that these features have rolled out for both the desktop version and the iPad version of these apps. There's one or two things where that, that's not the case, and I'll point it out if it's OS specific. The first one's a big one to me. It's the ability to use smart objects that have been imported from Photoshop documents. Adobe Photoshop has this concept called smart objects. Say you import a logo and you shrink it down to make it look good. And then the client comes along and says, make the logo bigger. And if you have a graphic file embedded in your Photoshop document and you enlarge it, what happens? It gets blurry. But if you use a smart object, that smart object remembers the original file size. So when you increase the size, it's not gonna get as blurry. It's going to remember all of that data for you and keep it crisp. And so now we have the ability to use those in Affinity Photo. So why is this a big deal? Well, apart from actually being able to create a smart object and use it, a lot of folks, a lot of agencies, a lot of designers are still in Adobe Creative Cloud land. And if you get a file from someone that's been made in that program and it's sent over to you and you open it up, oftentimes when you save that file, you lose the ability to edit those smart objects the way you can in, in Adobe Suite. And basically this makes it a lot easier to share across these two different programs. And for a lot of people, that's gonna make it a lot more appealing to make the switch over to Affinity Photo. All right, what else do we have here? We have new plugins support, we have Canon RAW support, we have better metadata handling, we have better lens correction and improvements, and these all sound like things that are great for photographers and anybody who's doing image manipulation. All right, I think we're ready to move on to Affinity Designer. So my favorite feature of this batch is the new stock photos panel. At first I thought, okay, cool, but then I realized how useful it was. You can search stock image sites right here in the application without going to the web browser. So you can connect to Unsplash, which is a free stock photo site that I like to use. There's others in there too, of course, but I can search for photos there. I can just drag and drop right out of that panel. And I realize this is, this is a big time saver. I usually round up a bunch of stock photos before I even start designing and try them out. But being able to do that right here in this application cuts out at least one or two steps. Another thing we have is stroke improvements. Some big improvements here. If you have a complex stroke, oftentimes that will turn into a shape that might have more points than you really expected it to, more complicated than it needs to be. So what they've done is they've just jumped in here and they've streamlined this. This sounds like more of a under the hood sort of thing, but it's nice to have, especially if you use it a lot. Another thing that's kind of under the hood here is the Boolean operations improvement. They say what this does is it speeds up the combining of shapes or cutting one shape out of another, that sort of thing. Next, I'm gonna talk about Publisher and then I'm gonna talk about some of the cool features that all three of these apps share. Now, as I've mentioned before, I haven't used 
use Publisher all that much. I've just played around with it. So I'm just gonna roll through this list. Live document pre-check to cut down on errors before you go to print. There's a document merge, a bunch of new improvements of master pages, uh, better organization and file resources, Excel data importing, new anchor panels, and text column dividing lines. Sorry for blowing through that so fast. I wanna get to the features that affect all of these apps. Affinity has added something called templates. Now, for example, I make thumbnails for all these videos and they all kind of look the same. I'm using the same font. I have my little icon graphic. I'm sliding a photo behind it. Usually what I do is I navigate to a folder. I find the last thumbnail I did. I open that up, save it as a new file and start editing from there. What this does is it allows you to take any file and save it as a template. So therefore, next time I make a thumbnail, Thumbnail, all I have to do is create a new document, grab that template, it's gonna pull in all the stuff that I need that I have saved in that template and I can work from there. Basically just saving me a step. And I could really see where if most of the design work that you're doing is templatized, this could be a huge time saver and allow you to just build out all your templates ahead of time and just grab those and go. I could also see this being used a lot in interface design, especially if you have a design system with a lot of components in it and you just want files that already have those components built in also could be a huge time saver. Another thing they've done across all three apps is they've changed their new document screen. They've made it more robust, added more options, and of course they're integrating a lot of those template things that I mentioned before. There's also a unified toolbar. Now, a quick note on this one, this is Mac OS only right now. Another Mac only feature is the use of Apple keyboard shortcuts for text editing. Honestly, I'm not sure what this changes, uh, but I'm sure there's someone out there who's commenting right now saying, thank goodness they've added this. And another thing they've added, and this is iPad only to Affinity Designer and Affinity Photo, is the ability to customize your own keyboard shortcuts. So if your iPad has a keyboard, you can go in there, go hog wild, make all the shortcuts you need. So that's the update. For me, there's not a lot here that I'm like super excited for. It seems like just some nice quality of life improvements. Although I geeked out enough for like three years worth of updates when they released the isometric grid a couple months back. If you wanna see what I look like when I get really super excited, I'm gonna throw that isometric grid video over here. What's your favorite feature? Let me know down below in the comments and thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in a couple of days.